All right, welcome back, everybody. I have someone you haven't heard from in a while, and it's Brian Armstead. He's been a little under the weather lately, and I hear he's back. I don't know if you're back in rare form now, but I'm glad you're calling on the phone this morning. Brian, how are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. Good. It's been a, a bit of an ordeal, but uh, by God's grace, I'm here, and uh, thankful to be able to call in this morning. How are you doing, James? I'm doing great, sir. I really am. You talked to me, uh, you wrote me last night and said you're going to be talking about the 2019 Kia Sorento, and I had a customer walk in yesterday, I believe, or the day before yesterday, and say, I'm looking at buying a car to put my wheelchair lift on, and I was thinking about buying a Kia Sorento. And I said, well, I've got a 2008, but that's a rear-wheel drive. And I know the 2019 are front wheel drive. And so tell us what you found out about the 2019 Sorento. Well, <clears throat> pardon me, it's, uh, it's vastly improved over the 2018 model. Oh. And the 2018 model was, was really good. Um, it's, just a, it's just a better vehicle all around. I mean, it's just really a very capable vehicle. Now, you, you, you spoke about the Sorento being available only as a front wheel drive. Mm -hmm. Well, that's only if you buy the base L trim. Oh, okay. They have different uh, trim specifications for the Sorento L, LX, mm -hmm. LXV6, EXV6, SXV6, and SXLV6. Wow. And, of course, as you go up in trim level, you go up in price. Okay. The base L has a 2.4 liter um, a direct injection engine outputting 185 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. And then when you get to the V6 models, it's 290 horsepower, outputting uh, 252 pound-feet of torque. Mm -hmm. And everything above the L trim is available in, with either front-wheel drive or full-time all-wheel ah. drive. So this is a 50-state car. It's very capable off-road. And, I mean, even if you're up in the, um, even with all-wheel drive, if you're up in, let's say, Minnesota or, or you know, Sioux St. Marie, then, you, you know, if you get a, a great set of snow tires, you can deal with most of the winter. I mean, you can't go out in blizzards. Oh, yeah. You know, you need a full-time four-wheel drive of locking differentials for mm -hmm. for that kind of um, activity. But this is very much a 50-state a car if you, if you outfit it with the right snow tires in the far northern climates. Now, between 2018 and 2019, mm -hmm. they've added a new 8-speed automatic or the V6 models. Eight they've revised speed. the six-speed automatic. Yeah, eight-speed. Wow, eight-speed. <laughs> they've revised the six-speed automatic on the uh, four-cylinder models. Uh, you can now get seven passenger, three-row seating on all trim levels. So on your base L, you can get it all the way up to the SXL V6. Hmm. Um, it's been redesigned front and rear. It's a beautiful SUV. It's very sleek. When you look at it, um, it I, I actually forgot they were dropping it off, and I have so many cars in my driveway right now. They parked in the front of the mailbox, uh, and I looked out the window. I'm like, "Who parked? It? Who parked my mailbox like that?" And I said, it's a, "It's a good looking car." And then I went outside and saw the California plate on the car, and realized it was for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's just good looking. Well, tell me what. It's just what good looking. Okay, now I know you've driven a lot of Sorentos over the years, and a lot of key. I mean, lots of cars. I mean, I remember the Kia Stinger was one that uh, I still think is a sharp looking car. But Kia's come so, I mean, in the last few years, you've seen a, a remarkable improvement in the quality and finish of these vehicles and safety. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible, you, yeah. You hit, the nail, you hit the nail right on the head, James. When you, I'm, I'm actually in the car. Mm -hmm. I'm, behind, I'm behind the wheel. I like doing uh, this program via Bluetooth because mm -hmm. I can actually put my hands on everything and, yeah. and talk about it. You know, it's like you're in a, a upper-end German luxury car because you've really? got beautiful soft leather on the on the um, armrest and across the dash you got stitched on um, leather across the dash you have a leather steering wheel you've got beautiful plastic trim but it looks like metal mm -hmm. across the front of the uh of, of the dashboard and the center console mm -hmm. the gauges are clear you've got a comprehensive trip computer okay. you've got full telematics with android and apple carplay crystal clear telematics uh, good Bluetooth because you sound good, and I hope I sound good. You to sound the really good. I mean, I thought you were talking to your cell phone. I mean, it sounds really great. I mean, no great. Problem. I've got a, I've got panoramic glass above me, which just lets in a lot of light. Mm -hmm. uh, my trim level, the SXL, has a really kick butt uh, Harman Kardon Quantum Logic surround sound system. It sounds hmm. awesome. It, yeah, just a lot of upscale features. Um, 
my trim, my my tester comes in at forty eight thousand dollars. But when you you know, it seems like a lot of money to pay for a Kia. But when you look at what you get mm-hmm. for the price, I mean, I could be on for the next twenty minutes talking about all the things that are standard. Like for example, there are thirty or forty standard options on the L, and then you add another ten for the LX, another five for the LX V6, right. another fifteen for the Limited, another twenty for the XV6, and another twenty for the SX V6. So you literally have a full page. I wish I could. Uh, well, I me- had a graphic that you could put up to it. It, it. You literally have a full page of things that you add to this vehicle that make it special. Let me just briefly go over oh, what you add when you get to the SX V6 model. Rack mounted power steering, uh, driven power steering. So you've got electric power steering, 19 mm-hmm. inch alloys, oh. LED amber positioning lights. Those are the daytime running lights. Okay. And they serve as turn signals also. So on some cars, you'll have a white LED daytime running light, and then when you need to turn on the turn signal, that white light cuts out so that you can differentiate between the two lights. Ah. Well, with Kia, the amber light serves as the daytime running light, and when you turn on the left or the right turn signal, that light simply flashes. It's a brilliant approach to a daytime running light. The amber daytime running light looks hella cool. It's just really, really a nice front end um, uh, attribute, accoutrement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've got a dark metallic grill, roof rails, red brake calipers, panoramic sunroof, stainless steel door plates, LED lighting inside, uh, beautiful cloth on the A pillar, second row sunshade screen, carpet mats, chrome luggage hooks, LED cargo lamps, 10 way power seats, 8 way power passenger seat, leather wrap steering wheel. Navigation, uh, eight-inch navigation display unit, Harman Kardon audio, and park distance warning forward. That's just what you add from the SX V6. Mm-hmm. The EX V6, the trim level before that, you add all the safety goodies: park distance warning, forward collision avoidance, forward collision warning, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, smart cruise control. So, I mean, for your forty-eight thousand dollars, you got one heck of an automobile that. Seat 7 yes. is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. So that's like the top of the, uh, top of the heap in terms of the, um, of the safety awards. And, you know, it's got the nation's best warranty. Ten years, 100,000 miles. I mean, it's, it's really a no-brainer. It, it, the only thing with Kias and the only thing with Hyundai is their corporate cousin is that they tend to lose value over the years. Yes. If you buy one, buy it. I, I you know... I think if you lease it, you can you can still uh, get a good residual at the end. But if you plan on keeping your car for a long time, mm-hmm. then the key is a great one to buy because you're yeah. going to lose. But like the Cadenza, for example, loses a lot of value over the mm-hmm. years. It's a it's a serious uh, sedan. It's a great automobile, but for some reason it never caught on. But um, if I were to buy, <clears throat> if I were to get into a Kia, I would probably buy it. And uh, you know they don't. Have they, their appreciation and residual rates are growing, not the best in the industry, but they do have top JD Power uh, scores. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they come from the worst in the JD Power surveys to yes. at one point they were at the top. I'm not sure if they're still at the top, but they're they're if they're not at the top, they're in the top three for JD Power customer satisfaction scores. Just a thing terrific I, audible. The only thing I know is when we bought our Kia, we bought our brand new Kia back in 2008 at the end of the year because we it was, it was a tax decision. And we've had it ever since. And we loan it out to customers to take, you know, for their car as a loaner car. And it doesn't have all the things. It doesn't have the lane departure and collision avoidance. Or all, it doesn't have any of those things. But that was back in 2008. And it was five-star right. crash rated two back in 2008. That Kia was. So Kia has kept up and made things better and kept up with the times. Uh, and yes. that crash avoidance and lane departure, those things right there are lifesavers. I mean, they They're really critical. are. They are lifesavers. They're critical. They are. I have Even people ask me. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Even the LX model adds blind spot collision warning and rear cross traffic uh, collision warning. Mm-hmm. So at every trim level, you, you get a, a good measure of safety. The L comes in at 25, 990. Oh, and great. again, if you want to fully trick it out, then you go up to the SX, uh, or EX, uh, SXL V6. And um, 
you know, it's just it's just a great it's just a great automobile. I, I really I guess. can see myself owning a Kia Sorento, so that should that should be a statement for you in terms of um you, you know how strongly I feel about um the company. I, I think they um they do a good job with reaching out and mm-hmm. keeping their cons- consumers happy. I've sold a lot of Kias to, I've convinced a lot of my friends and family to buy Kias, mm-hmm. and they're all happy with their purchases. I ha- Yes, um, I agree. I have people the same way. I've had lots of people buy Kias over the year, and I don't think I've had anyone complain about the vehicle per se. I mean, they've had some problems with some minor problems, but pretty much it's a very dependable, safe vehicle. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm very, very pleased. I, um, I just wanted to take a moment to, um, I know I've got a couple of minutes yeah. left, but <clears throat> I got into this business uh, 20 plus years ago, and I had the pleasure of meeting uh, and actually working with the Washington Post correspondent, uh, automotive writer Warren Brown. Mm -hmm. Warren passed uh, this week. As a matter of fact, buried him yesterday. And uh, I just wanted just to to thank Warren. I know you're up in, in heaven listening. I just wanted to thank Warren and all of his readers over the years and he taught so many of us uh, minority journalists, African American, Asian American, mm-hmm. Latino American, how to what the standard was for operating in this automotive business. It's mm-hmm. a tough business. You come in. When I first came into the business, I walked into my first press conference. I was the only black person there. It was a bunch of older white guys, and it was a, it was a really a really well defined clique. And I, I felt totally out of place. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do I really belong here? But by working with Warren over the years and, and having him as my mentor and and reading his column in the Washington Post, he was an outstanding writer, mm-hmm. a Columbia School of Journalism grad. Um, it, and, you know, ultimately we did a radio show together, Washington Post Radio and World Radio and XM Radio. And mm-hmm. the, the guy was just a terrific journalist and a terrific human being. He, he took care of a lot of... Uh, his godchildren, so to speak. You know, he helped a lot of families who couldn't afford to take care of their kids. He was active in his community. He was active in his church. And he, he's just a guy in my lifetime that will be missed, James. Mm. Warren, Warren passed from uh, complications from kidney disease. He fought valiantly, valiantly over the years. And um, I just wanted to give a, a big shout-out up in heaven to my man, Warren Brown from the Washington Post, for... Um, for fighting a good fight, for living a great life, for taking care of his family and friends. I miss him, I love him, and, uh, you know, I missed all my health challenges I've had over the last couple of months. You know, I understand the value of, of it's really put mm. the value of life and yes. friendship into a clearer perspective for me. I, I see that, especially when you lose someone that's close to you. I, I was reading in the obituary today, I lost a good friend of mine I used to play golf with today. I didn't, and I hadn't seen him in about six months. And I looked in the paper and I said, oh, I'm going to miss Marvin. A friend of mine named Marvin Duke, 72 years old, retired Navy. We used to play golf together. He's EOD, Explosive Ordinance. Known the guy for a few years, and uh, he will be missed, just like Marvin Brown here. I mean, he was a mentor to you. Marvin Warren, was kind Warren of... Brown, yes. Yes, Warren Brown. Excuse me. He was a, uh, uh, Marvin Dukes, to me, was, like you said, he gave me some perspectives like you got uh, different perspectives on things, and I really appreciate that. But my, it's really yes, a pleasure thanks. talking to you. Thank you so much for calling. I look forward to hearing you. Every, you know when you can call back again. If you call next week, great. I'll be next. I'll be. I, I should be back on track. I'll be calling in next week. Okay, sounds wonderful. We got to go. We're up against the clock. As a matter of fact, I went over. We'll talk to you again next week. 